should be back now. Alright, yes, Fire Emblem has dragons. Alright, <clears throat> so, back in, what was it, 2001, when Super Smash Bros. Melee came out? Pretty sure it was 2001. Uh, there were a couple of characters uh, that American audiences had never met before. Uh, there was Marth and Roy coming from the Fire Emblem series. Marth, of course, is the hero of the original game. Uh, and the third game also. Don't worry about it. And Roy was the hero of the latest entry in the series at the time that came out on the Game Boy Advance. This is not that game. This is actually a prequel to Roy's game, uh, set about 20 years before the events of that one. And it was the first one that got released outside of Japan. So I'll let this play out a little. Uh, cause you get to see some nice little animations. Uh, since this is the one that came out for, you know, international audiences, uh, I believe, uh, they decided to do, well, a couple of things. They made some changes that were for the better, um, they included an extended tutorial. Uh, here we're seeing like, a whole bunch of uh, you know, units that we will see throughout the course of this playthrough. You know, basic descriptions. Uh, yeah, that probably covers enough of it. Clerics. Don't worry about clerics. Uh, oh, I gotta actually click into the window. There we go. Uh, so yeah. With that said, we're just gonna start right in on a new game. Uh, personal information. So, for the purposes of this game, you take on the role of uh, a tactician. This has very little meaning with the game, uh, virtually no impact, but I am going to change the name. Uh, I, my birthday is in January, so you know what, that's good. This probably isn't going to look super great when it's all blown up via emulator, but, uh... Yeah, sometimes you get these, uh, these little, like, CGs or whatever. Uh, but most of the game that you're going to see, or at least most of the characters talking, uh, is going to be in the form of these portraits. Wow, rude. Well, I'm glad it it looks okay. Okay, so I'm hoping that the text scrolling is slow enough. Um uh, that it's okay that I'm kind of clicking through it kind of fast. I mean, the gist of it is I, as the tactician, just suddenly woke up in the middle of somewhere. Alright, so we've got bandits from the Burn Mountains. A lot of this is going to make a little more sense soonish. Thank you. 
See, as the tactician, you know, we're the, the silent type. The type where we don't actually say anything, it's just other characters reacting. It's fine. Red Shadow King, hello. Alright, uh, I'm gonna skip through the basic information here. So blue units are your team, red units are the enemy team. Uh, green units are not playable. Uh, they're normally considered other units. Uh, so that means that, no, I will not that the tactician is not going to be on the field. Hello, Lord Tyrion. Welcome. Uh, the genre does get a little complex, but that's kind of why I wanted to do this one, because it's nice and simple. So the game... Oh, before I do anything, uh, I do want to put animations on. Uh, this is all fine. I mean, there's all this stuff that's not terribly important. Uh, oh, window color. I'm gonna change that. Make it green. Yeah. Get different kinds of combat info windows. Really, you just want the basic one. The detailed one is just too much information. So this whole campaign with Lynn is going to be an extended tutorial. Alright, so basically the game wants me to draw an arrow over there. There she goes. She can't do anything except wait, so... The bandit has approached. See, I never could get into Final Fantasy Tactics, because that one always felt a little too complicated for me. Um, what with how you have to, like, face your uh, units the right way. Uh, in this game, that does not matter that much. You don't have to face your units. Oh, oh. So I just have to... Pick any of these squares next to the enemy. I'll just go with that one. It really doesn't matter which one I choose. Alright, so... Now we'll do the attack. Uh, by the way, weapons do have uh, limited durability. That is one of the complicating factors of this game, I will admit. But, uh... Yeah, here we go. See, here's our combat info window. So we'll see... In blue is uh, my HP, uh, my might, that's uh, my uh, attack power, uh, my hit rate, and my critical rate. And then red, of course, is for the enemy. So, uh, real quick, something I do have to talk about is that hit rate. Uh, so what this game does is uh, it does something called true hit. So... The game's random number generator, which, uh, by the way, is just a list of numbers uh, that always starts from the same point every time you turn the game on. Uh, so the random number generator, to calculate whether an enemy, or whether any unit, friend or foe, uh, actually hits the target, it actually does two checks. Um, it rolls, you know, the numbers twice, and then it takes the average of those two numbers. And if it's lower than what, you know, the listed hit rate is, then the attack connects. Um, so what that means, though, is that uh, it greatly exaggerates um, the actual hit rate. So a 39 for the bandit here is going to be a lot lower in practice than what it is on paper. Um, 
I know you can look up exactly how it works out, but uh, for example, if the the hit rate was one, um, then the two rolls would have to be a one and a uh, would either have to be two zeros or a one and a zero. Uh, and if you do the math on that, well, the odds of getting that are one in ten thousand. So you're practically never going to hit uh, with a hit rate that low. Likewise, uh, if it's 99, you're practically never going to miss. That's a 1 in 10,000 chance of missing. Uh, so basically, uh, the further away you are from 50, uh, the more likely you are to hit or miss, depending on which side you are. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's actually do a combat. So for that attack, Lin here got 10 experience. This is a Fire Emblem where uh, anytime a unit is in battle, they get at least one experience point. If they land an attack, they'll get more. And if they get a kill, they'll get even more than that. So now we're going to get the item tutorial. All right. Oh, you don't know what a gear is? It's a type of round hut. Obviously. Anyway. So they want me to go here and use uh, items that we now suddenly have. Uh, vulneraries are your basic healing item. They will restore 10 HP. Which is conveniently exactly what Lin lost. And yeah, you know, the, the graphics do look really good on bigger screens now that I'm actually looking at it myself. Uh, Alright, so now when I go to next to the bandit, he's got that shield icon flashing, that means he's a boss. And uh, look at that. Actually, he's not that much stronger than the last guy. He's more dodgy, though. Um, oh no, Bata the Beast! Alright, so obviously that's dicey. If he manages to get one more hit in, Lin dies. And, uh, obviously, I don't want that. Fortunately, since this is the tutorial, this whole battle is scripted, really. So now he's going to get his attack. Uh, he's standing on a gate spot. Mm, I love it. I sure hope that looked as good on the stream. as it did on my end. But yes, even that critical hit was scripted. Uh, that is a really good level up, by the way. I'll have to get into that in a later chapter. Uh, unlike critical hits, uh, or unlike regular hits, like checking for contact, critical hit only does one check, so uh, if it says you've got 1% critical rate, that means you're actually ha getting a 1% critical rate. Uh, this is about leveling up. Uh, an important thing to note about leveling up is that uh, it is also dependent on the RNG. Uh, every... You know, let's see. Can I? Uh, it's not going to let me do it just yet. By seizing the gate to the gear, uh, that means we win. So that's going to be a common objective in the game. Not the only one, but a common objective is to uh, capture a certain point, which means uh, taking your lord, like Win, and uh, sending her to a specific square that's usually held by the enemy. 
Well, I mean, always held by the enemy. Gotta ask your parents, kids. Don't go gallivanting off with strangers without your parents' permission. Um, except in this case. It's probably fine. So yeah, unfortunately, Lynn already has the tragic backstory. She was the daughter of the chieftain of the tribe, and the tribe has sadly been wiped out. Because they were just too gosh darn stubborn. It's fine. She had a good cry about it. Tia, the sad backstory you missed was literally just that uh, bandits attacked her tribe and wiped them all out. Now don't worry, Lynn will have plenty of opportunity to level up. next chance I get, I might turn up the scroll speed of the text, because that's a, a little slow for my liking. But, anyway. Yeah, I got some mysterious narrator telling me what to do, like, yeah, I get it. Alright, so, I'm gonna save... And I'm doing a little experiment here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to save each chapter as a separate video. So I'm recording this time. That way when I put them up on YouTube, it'll be nice, clean. Uh, this video is this chapter and so on. So let me make sure I got my hotkey set up right. 